The Klamath Siskiyou ecoregion that straddles the Oregon and California border has been called the wildest place on the West Coast. It's renowned for its numerous wild rivers, unique geology, and incredible biodiversity. For part three of OTG's North State and Southern Oregon adventure, we head to the newly minted Siskiyou Crest Adventure Trail in the Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest. This is gonna be a fun one, so buckle up, get comfy, and come along for the ride with the OTG crew as we take on what just might be the most scenic overlanding track in Southern Oregon. For part three of OTG's North State and Southern Oregon adventure, we pick up things on the north end of the Siskiyou Crest Adventure Trail. The Siskiyou Crest Adventure Trail is a 311 mile track that stretches from Ashland to the Rogue River Canyon in the north. To access the detailed route guide and GPX files, you'll want to head over to overlandtrailguides.com. If you happen to hear us mention the Siskiyou Sasquatch Trail in our videos, the Siskiyou Crest is the updated version of that route. Why don't we get into our adventure now? Excited to be leaving the Wild Rivers Discovery Trail behind us, we hit the Rogue River alternate route, the north end of the Siskiyou Crest Adventure Trail. Looking at the map in Gaia, I knew the train ahead would be rugged as we'd be dropping straight into the Rogue River Canyon. The views were nothing short of sublime, but things didn't quite go as planned. Stick around to see what we mean. As we descended into the Rogue River Canyon, we were awestruck by its rugged beauty. A thousand feet below us, we could see a group of rafters getting ready to shoot through a series of rapids. We hung out taking in the views for 15 minutes or so, completely naive to the surprise that awaited us at the bottom of the canyon. Well, we got an issue. Yeah, I Report saw that. from local is uh, there's a landslide down that way from a recent fire. Come here, Shasta. And because of that, they closed this. So back to the drawing board. So we were supposed to come down that and then jump over here to this other track to Parasol Peak, but we're blocked right there. So we're effectively going to take pavement all the way back down here probably back down here, back up, and then jump up that way. So we're gonna air up. Okay, it is what it is. And so we aired up and hit the pavement. We made our way to Grant's Pass for a quick fuel stop, and about an hour later, we were back on dirt and climbing into the clouds of the red rocked Siskiyou Mountains. The views along Chrome Ridge Road were really something else. We drove up to Flat Top Mountain, but unfortunately the fog shrouded the mountaintop obstructing any chance of a view. The wind was whipping hard, and intermittent light rain dashed any hope of launching the drone. But the serpentine landscape of the Siskiyous and the fog-draped ridges and canyons created an otherworldly and rather calming experience.
Well guys, super stoked that we took this alternate route and we're gonna do more of it tomorrow. Right now, we are headed to look for some uh, campsites. There's a couple of, I don't know what they are, campgrounds and other stuff on here and some other areas that look like look like they're promising. We just didn't want to stay up on the ridge. It is cold and blustery up there. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get some drone shots and then we'll jump back on the Siskiyou Sasquatch Trail. Who knows, maybe even we'll make even make this particular section that we're doing as an alternate route because it is, it's mind blowing. All right, let's go look for camp. Hello from Sam Brown Campground. We've got camp. We have one neighbor down the way. I think they're down at the day use area, but there's, you know, we're the only two people here at like 25 sites, so whatever. Um, just taking the dog for a walk. She's been in the truck all day, so she's super antsy. But this is actually a really nice spot. It was spectacular up on the ridge on top of the mountains, but it was cold and it was blustery down here. It's nice, it's super nice. So just taking the dog for a walk and have some dinner. Shasta, come here, come here, come here, come on. Just had a friendly talk with a local named JR. JR, thank you. Um, I was talking to him about the trail that we're trying to take tomorrow from York Butte down across Briggs Creek to uh, I think across Brushy Bar and over the Illinois River. He thinks we can do it. It's just a matter of how deep that creek is. It's earlier in the season, so we'll see. Uh, but we got some big, we got some big, uh, some big rigs here, so I think we'll be okay. But we'll find out. we've got success. <laughs> Having a good time. Well, Shasta was in the car all of yesterday, I should say the truck, all of the day before, the day before that, and the day before that, and the day before that. So she's getting pretty antsy. She's starting like throwing stuff around in camp, sticks. So we're gonna go throw her the ball a little bit here. I think our neighbor is down in the day use area. I think they actually vacated last night. Uh, it was super quiet here. It was very nice. Hi, hey, Shasta. Hi. Hey. Just having fun. And cheers. Oh, right. All right. 
Good girl. All right, guys, about to head out from Sam Brown camp. Awesome night last night. Our neighbors in the day use area, they weren't actually camping out here, so it was super duper quiet. So the plans for today, we're gonna try to get over to Parasol Peak, but we gotta cross Briggs Creek first. Heard it can be kind of deep from one of the locals over here. I guess we'll find out. One of us might be waiting. It's a little bit chilly, but a lot nicer today. Um, I can actually see blue clouds and you can see sunshine around us. So hoping we can launch the drone when we get up on top because yesterday it was cold, it was damp, and we were getting some, some gusts of wind as well. Let's go get into it. Ponderosa pine here. So as you guys can see, there's a substantial Ponderosa pine, good lake, three, three and a half feet in diameter. We could probably, I don't know if we can get through it with our, <laughs> with our saws because they're only 18 inch bars, but I'm also seeing a lot more deadfall down here. I'm not sure we are going to, uh, to do this track because it obviously hasn't been cleared yet. Here's another one about a hundred yards down. I mean, that's a pretty, pretty quick job. A couple minutes and then another one. And then if we keep hitting stuff like that, probably just going to uh, reroute. Well, my amateur chainsaw skills, I was over here trying to help Andreas and I managed to get the bar stuck when that, uh, when that fell. So I think we're gonna bring the winch over, try to figure out how to get that chainsaw out without damaging the bar. Super slow. So close. So close. Well, can you really call it an adventure if you're not challenged along the way? We need to get creative to get my chainsaw unstuck, so we resorted to Andreas's winch at first, and then soon determined we'd need to utilize his winch line in conjunction with a pulley to pull the tree to the side of the trail. We were able to get the chainsaw bar unstuck. From there, we traversed an old burn zone with a considerable amount of branches and wood shards scattered across the road. And would you know it? One of those giant wooden shards managed to lodge itself right into one of my front tires. I do, I do have plugs, yeah. Okay. Done. 
see this is a pretty substantial. We're having issues getting it out. I'm gonna try to drill it. See what happens. Third one. Let's hope it holds. Well, you can see it's wet. We did the water test. Uh, we did the air test. Seems to be holding. I also have a monitor inside the truck, so I will uh, watch that and hopefully she holds. After traveling a couple of miles without any downed trees and fixing the flat tire, I had figured any deadfall was behind us. Well, I was half right. We encountered a freshly cut fallen log, but it was just a couple inches too narrow for our rigs to fit through. So back to work we went with the chainsaws. Ooh, oh. <laughs> Knowing that Briggs Creek was just around the corner and preparing ourselves for the worst, I have to admit, I was a bit underwhelmed. While Briggs Creek was a beautiful mountain stream, it was 18, maybe 20 inches deep. Our rigs easily forded the stream as we headed into the Illinois River Canyon. The Illinois River Canyon from Briggs Creek out to the pavement is really something else. You can see why it's so popular with the locals on weekends, especially during the hot summer months. Lucky for us, we were visiting on a weekday so the crowds were relatively thin. We made a quick lunch stop at Miami Bar and took in the scenery and peacefulness of the wilderness as we had the entire place to ourselves. So the, uh, the gate at Paracel Peak is closed, so we're not gonna be able to do that. We're going out to the swinging bridge over here, over the Illinois River, popular swimming spot on the weekends this time of year. Definitely a little bit nicer than yesterday, and it is, it is beautiful out here. If you ever get the chance to visit the Siskiyou Crest Adventure Trail, I highly recommend trying to visit the Illinois River and swinging bridge on a weekday like we did. It can get quite hectic on weekends, and looking at the clear emerald waters of the Illinois, it's pretty obvious why it's such a popular spot with locals. After visiting the Swinging Bridge, we continued down the track in search of camp and managed to find what might just be my favorite campsite along the Siskiyou Crest Adventure Trail.
All right, guys, $8 Mountain was a bust, but along the way, we found a really killer camp spot along the, uh, I don't know if we're on the Southern Fork of the Illinois or the Illinois, I'll throw it up on the screen when we put this up there, but killer spot. Shasta and I are just going down to this really nice pool with some bluffs and then we're up there. Hey, not bad, right? We get to wake up to this. Not easy to walk around here, is it Shasta? Well, I wanted to go out in the river a little bit, but it's, it's moving pretty swiftly and these rocks are insanely slippery out here and I'm just worried. I'm gonna tumble, take a fall, put my knee, break the camera, something like that. So this will have to do. All right, guys, we got a very basic dinner here. Some bratwurst, baked beans, some Hawaiian sweet rolls. Super easy to make. Got the river to get some water and help us clean up, and let's enjoy ourselves. What are you having for dinner, Andreas? Chicken parmesan. Oh, I'm kind of offended you didn't invite me. It's okay. I bet you're wondering why we're surrounded by mountains of mine tailings. Well, it's because we were just upstream of one of the richest gold mining districts in Southern Oregon. Be sure to tune in next time as we continue on the Siskiyou Crest and part four of OTG's North State and Southern Oregon adventure. Until next time, Godspeed and safe travels.